This is a U.S.-China media brief produced by the UCLA Asian American Studies Center. The U.S.-China media brief features interviews with experts and other prominent individuals involved in studying and documenting the dynamic and ever-evolving relationship between the United States of America and the People's Republic of China. I'm Russell Leong, director of the U.S.-China Media Brief of the UCLA Asian American Studies Center. Our purpose is to provide a more balanced view of U.S.-China relations for the U.S. media through our media brief and website. I wonder if China imports the American way of media system, American way of media freedom, or the American way of democratic freedom or the freedom what Americans talking about as my number of my Chinese colleagues and I myself saying China can become immediately 11 different nations can be meaning can be torn apart into number of different entities what that's what the the American power for the new pro, the new pro, project for new American century the China the US may intend to to make that happen, uh, in order to continue my, as Chomsky put it, imperial ambition to the whole globe. But China has become the major obstacle for me to continue to apply my global hegemony. And so in order to make that happen, I, I, I have to make the, the other big guy weaker or divided. From the, that perspective, I do not support the Chinese government to bring American-style media uh, culture. It will not help. It will not serve the people. It will not make the China as a one united country. Having said that, in that sense, some sort of media control may be necessary for the country like China, for the country like Cuba, for the country like the DPRK. For the DPRK case, they are at war with the United States. Technically, since 1973, July 27, they only have signed for the, the not peace treaty, but the armistice agreement, which can be broken at, at any moment by either party. So the DPRK case, the with the dealing with the, the only su the global superpower, the military readiness to attack them, this small poor nation, the divided and encircled by other nations, and no choice but to do their own media control, some sort of to keep that their own so social, political unity in order to deal with this major, major, huge, gigantic power. So by the same token, again back to the China, Many may not agree with me, but it's my argument. China must not follow after American media system as its model. China can learn so many from U.S., from the West, and from other parts of the world, but not shouldn't copy the the way the system the, the, of the media runs here in the United States. Uh, so the me media control in two different nations cannot be the same, it should not be the same, it can be different. That difference should be, I say, I argue, honored and respected. Instead that you don't have freedom of press, you don't have the freedom of religion, etc., etc., while U.S. do the, in the global the scale that the, the military invasion or the, through the culture, the soft power still dominates the whole world. I do not believe the American culture should be the future of the whole globe. It, it, the American culture, meaning that Hollywood culture, for example, may not be necessarily healthy culture. They are a lot better, a lot healthier, a lot communal, humane culture out there in the, in the whole globe not necessarily the, the Hollywood culture, for example. Yeah. Now, yeah, I understand it on that kind of level, uh, the globalization of American culture, but when you get down to, uh, for instance, the level of uh, 
regular people uh, using uh, cell phones or texting messages, whether they are anxious parents, migrant workers, other types of constituencies. They're not necessarily being, uh, you know, their concern is not American culture even, but it's usually uh, some kind of issue that they may be having, and they may be using, uh, you know, a certain kind of technology, global technology, sure, to, uh, sure. to think about things, to raise issues, to organize. So that's also a part of, you know, media, but it's not necessarily a part of, you know, uh, American global globalization. I'm talking about, say, within China, you know, you hear their stories about uh, sure. various groups. So sure. what would your viewpoint be on this type of thing, U utilizing uh, <coughs> global technology to uh, organize, to raise issues, to, uh, to discuss uh, You know, the, when I talk things, about you know. the China, uh -huh. the, the, the putting you, the yourself to other person's shoes, uh -huh. in an American saying, uh, meaning that when, when we talk about, when we talk about American power, when you talk about Europe, when you talk about the other the cultures and nationalities, or same thing about the China, we must begin with respect and, and try to understand why they do that. So the putting myself to their, their shoes, meaning that trying to see the situation from their perspective. So having said this introductory remark, I, I see that that type of issues from the Chinese perspective. First, I don't think it's, it's possible to, to bring some complete media control or the complete control of all that 1.3 billion generation, the, the population. Some sort of media control is being employed to, to contain certain things within the country, but it is, I, I, what, I, what I said wasn't, you know, that the, the literal dictation of every, each and every, everyone's, what they are saying, what they are hearing. Uh, I, I believe the Chin, Chinese people in, in my, the daily experience there, they, they have their own freedom. They, in, in, within their own culture, within their own political system, they do what they like, what they want. They may not be able to do certain things, such as to harm the national unity, for example, or to, to discredit their nation in front of the world. The preceding copyrighted program is a property of the University of California, Los Angeles, all rights reserved. It may be used freely for educational and not-for-profit activities. For other uses or to make an inquiry, please contact the Asian American Studies Center at UCLA.